Hello everyone, we will revisit the different factors which affect the tensile results once again because now what we will try, we will try to solve few numericals which are practical in sense okay. and uh, the how the different factors affect the tensile results that we will try to see try to understand by practical example. Okay. Now, the factors which we have discussed earlier was first the specimen length, specimen length which directly affect the tensile result for the same yarn if we increase the specimen length the tensile result tensile strength apparent tensile strength remains actually becomes lower that we have seen. So, basic thing is that it is a weak link theory that we have discussed earlier the yarn the any material as a matter of fact breaks actually at its weakest point. Okay. So, that if we keep on increasing the test length that the weakest point it will reach okay. at certain weakest point it will break. Now, suppose in this figure the yarn length is say S 1 plus S 2 plus S 3 plus S 4 that is the yarn length oh sorry L 1 plus L 2 plus L 3 plus L 4 is the length of the yarn and the breaking strength of the yarn with L 1 portion it is S 1 L 2 portion S 2 L 3 S 4, L 3 S 3 and L 4 with the S 4. Okay. Now, if we see the S 3 is the least followed by S 1, then S 4 and S 2, S 2 is the highest. Now, if we take the yarn length total yarn length, it will show a result of breaking strength as S 3 which is least. Now, if we keep on reducing, then the mean value if we say total yarn we break in four different test L 1, L 2, L 3, L 4 section of same length we have we are just breaking into four dividing into four uh, different sections. In that case the yarn strength will be S 1 plus S 2 plus S 3 plus S 4 divided by 4 it is a mean which is anyway it is more than S 3 that shows that the reduction in test length increases the apparent strength of uh, yarn. Okay. Now, this if we see that this is the uh, if we in this example S 1 plus S 2 the two segments if we take then the mean value if we take the S 1 uh, first portion as, as a result S 1 and second portion as a result S 2 then mean will be S 1 plus S 2 by Okay, that is mean, but if we take the total lay, uh, length of yarn then the yarn strength will be S 1 which is basically less than the mean yarn strength with the two segments O O double dash and O double dash O dash. So, this this two segments if we take then it will be higher. So, that is it shows S 1 plus S 2 by 2 is always higher than S 1. Now, in that way if we think that we total yarn if we reduce the length with a smaller uh, segment in that case then the mean strength is will always consistently will increase. Now, if we take the this effect is known as the weak link effect and also in addition to the length the irregular more the irregularity of the yarn the higher will be the effect. Okay. So, that at higher irregularity this weak link effect will be more. Okay. Hence, by adjusting the gauge length the test result may be actually varied. You can change the test result of a particular yarn by changing the gauge length. Okay. So, it is important to specify the standard gauge length. Okay. It is important now this is the in this picture we have we can see that more irregular the yarn 
so red colored is the highly irregular yarn in that case that weaker point more and more weaker point will be there okay on the other hand the blue color shows the almost regular yarn although maybe the mean strength is lower than the irregular yarn but in that case if you, if we see its breaking strength breaking point will be higher than the irregular yarn okay so for processing point of view slightly lower average strength is okay with but the yarn regularity should be better now this uh, uh, pierce empirical equation which shows that the this r ratio ratio r means the number of times it increases okay so that sl is the length with the l gauge length and srl is the strength mean strength with the rl gauge length so r times of l is that which that time it increases and v is the cv percent of the yard now if we see if we increase the r that means that the yarn strength mean strength will will reduce and also at the same time if we the v cv percent if it increases the strength will be lower now see so r if r increases the ratio is rl by l that means rl is the longer length strength with the higher length the r times of l length so suppose it's a if we test its a gauge length is a 10 centimeter and if r is a 5 that means for if we test 50 with a 50 gauge length it will be that we can just check that how many time it will reduce okay the strength and similarly the higher the irregularity the v is the cv percent of the strength higher the irregularity will show lower the value of srl by sl so that means the if we take the irregular yarn the same length gauge keeping the same gauge length if we take the irregular yarn in that case it will be totally it will higher irregularity the strength will drop but in this equation it shows the if we keep the gauge length same in that case the effect of cv we cannot see from this equation because in that case r will be 1 if we take the same gauge length only changing the variability in that uh, in that situation this equation is not valid because r will be 1 then total this segment will be 0 okay then it will be same it shows same in that case impact of the yarn irregularity is not there so yarn irregularity impact will only come if we change the gauge length so according to this equation okay and rate of loading or, or time to break so in that case most textile material so an increase in breaking strength with the increase in rate of extension that we have uh, discussed already this is mainly due to the viscoelastic uh, nature of the uh, material and it has got two components viscous component and elastic component in the elastic component actually in the, in the elastic component it uh, it's uh, shown by the spring model so we can see here so any textile material we can represent with a spring and viscous model okay so that this is the viscous model in that way we can show here this spring section it's basically it changes with the extension load changes with the extension but this viscous segment the load changes with the rate of extension so if we increase the rate of extension in that case the load actually the strength the material will increase now you can see here this is the spring model and this is a dashboard model model okay so viscous model and here if we apply force the force has been divided into two components f1 which is by by spring and f2 by dashboard spring dashboard model and the f1 increases proportionally with the 
that is the extension okay that's a this is proportional as, as the extension increases it uh, f also increases f1 also increases but in dashpot the f2 increases with the rate of extension okay and also we have seen as we increase the rate of extension our the stress exerted by the material increases okay so for at high rate of extension this is the nature of curve which is shown by the green line and at low rate of extension it's a blue line now based on this basic uh, understanding now we will try to solve few numericals okay now before that the rate of loading and time to break this uh, formula we have already discussed where the ft is the load exerted by the material trace and or load exerted by the material when the breaking time is t and f 10 is the for breaking time 10. So, this is the general equation if we just rearrange the equation we will reach to the it is a general standard equation f t minus f s by f s equal to 0 0.1 log it is base 10 with s by t where t is the breaking time for any uh, for uh, force at the breaking time t, s is the breaking load at the breaking time s and s is the time. Okay. So, that from this using this equation we can solve different practical problem. Okay. Now, try to see the problem. So, so, the standard time to break a specimen as per the B s standard it is a 20 plus minus 3. So, we have to decide we have to select the strain rate in such a fashion the standard time s is typically it is a 20 second okay. accordingly we can decide. Now, this is the problem if a yarn shows a strength of 400 centi Newton when the time taken to break was for 10 second okay. that is a this we have discussed earlier also. So, at 10 second time to break the strength is 400 centi Newton calculate the breaking load if the rate of loading was increased to cause the yarn to break in 1 second. So, we have increased the breaking load that means breaking rate the rate of extension we have increased that means here the viscous the dashpot it is coming into picture. So, in that case if we increase the rate. So, this is the formula we have seen earlier equation. So, F t is the breaking load for a material or uh, to time to break of t second and F 10 is the breaking load for a time to break a 10 second this is the and here 10 second F 10 is the 10 second at 10 second F 10 this F 10 becomes 400 centi Newton it is given. Now, what we want f 1 f 1 we want okay. now f 1 equal to f 10 multiplied by 1.1 this 1.1 minus 0 0.1 log 1 log t okay. log 1 this is the and that it gives log 1 it gives 0. So, it becomes 1.1 multiplied by 4. So, 4 40 centi Newton. So, here it shows you just we can see as we increase the rate of extension by 10 times the load breaking load increases by 10 percent. So, that is the uh, thing, but it is not the in general 10 times increase in breaking uh, extension rate of extension increases the 10 percent of breaking strength. Okay, from 400 it becomes 440. Now, next numerical we can see now if the rate of extension of a yarn is doubled. So, we have made the rate of extension we have changed it in such a fashion rate of extension has become doubled. Okay. What will be the percentage change percentage increase in measured yarn strength for the same gauge length. So, what we are doing here here we are not changing the gauge length. So, the problem is like 
this is yarn, this is moving jaw, okay, moving jaw. This gauge length we are not changing, okay. At certain this gauge length, suppose speed was v, so rate of extension was v. Now, here next time what we are doing next say sample we are keeping the gauge length same same gauge length but we are doing 2 v1 this is the second condition and here what we have given and what we are try to we are trying to know that the rate of extension is double so it is the rate of extension we are increasing so what will be the percentage change in percentage increase definitely it will increase increase in strength breaking strength that we are trying to understand now so here condition is that breaking elongation remains same okay so we we are not changing the breaking elongation but we want to know the uh, breaking strength so in first stage the time to break is s okay and in second stage time to break is t. So, as we have doubled the speed, so time to break because you are breaking its extension remains same. So, time to break will be halved, it will be half of the early s, s by 2, it is a time to break. So, s and then t equal to s by 2. So, using the earlier formula. So, this is the formula here s by t. So, s by t becomes 2. So, this is the f t minus f s by f s and percentage change in breaking strength or percentage increase in breaking strength means f t minus f s by f s multiplied by 100 that is what we want we want to measure f t minus f s by f s multiplied by 100. So, if we multiply this right hand side 0.1 log s by t that is that will give us the percentage change in the yarn strength. Okay. So, that is the um, way we have to do. So, this 0.1 log s by t multiplied by 100 this is percentage change and s by t as from our condition it is it is 2 okay. s by t it is become 2. So, 0.1 log 2 multiplied by 100 that is the percentage change in breaking strength and it is coming out to be 3 percent 3.01 percent. So, that is the problem. So, we can uh, keeping the breaking elongation suppose in this by changing when we are changing the breaking uh, rate okay, rate of extension considering the breaking elongation is not changed. Okay. In that case if we if we double the rate and the in percentage change in strength will be say 3.01 percent that is the thing. Now, if we know the breaking extension then also we can do we can solve the problem in the same fashion. So, if we know the breaking elongation for both the cases in that case we can calculate we have to first calculate the time to break. So, in the first stage and time to break in the second stage in that in then we can do. So, in different way we can solve the problem. Okay. Next problem is that this problem we have to understand this is uh, it is a very practical problem and it is a uh, this type of problem we can actually we study in uh, research. Okay. Now, a 40 any 67 33 polyester cotton blended yarn showed a breaking load of 300 gram when tested in CRE constant rate of elongation tester with 100 millimeter gauge length and 100 millimeter per minute traverse rate. So, effectively this 40 NE and 67 33 in this numerical in this problem does not mean anything. Okay. This is a an yarn okay. one should not get confused because this is the just a specification of yarn here we are trying to understand the effect of rate of loading and time to break. Okay. The situation is that here the 
problem here is that the condition here in first case our braking load 300 gram with what condition 100 millimeter gauge length and 100 millimeter per minute speed. Now, what we have seen earlier both this gauge length and speed they have effect. Okay. If we increase the gauge length then the braking load if we increase the gauge length braking load reduces okay. that we have seen and if we increase the the traverse rate traverse rate increases then braking load increases. So, that we have uh, seen here now what we are doing here that initially that the speed was the 100 millimeter per minute and gauge length was 100 millimeter. Now, what are the expected percentage change in observed tenacity of the yarn if the traverse length is increased to 500 millimeter per minute. So, from 100 to 500 millimeter per minute we are trying to do. Okay. From 100 to 500 millimeter per minute we are trying and we want to. So, if we increase the traverse rate definitely the there will be increase in this uh, braking load and also from 100 and, uh, and this is 1 and situation 2 is from 100 millimeter gauge length we are making it to 500 millimeter gauge length. And now we want to uh, know the percentage decrease in the strength breaking strength percentage decrease here in this case. Okay. So, situation 1 is the traverse length is increased to 500 millimeter keeping the gauge length is constant. So, it is from 100 millimeter per minute to 500 millimeter per minute we want we are doing keeping the gauge length constant and in next case it is a gauge length is increased to 500 millimeter keeping the traverse length rate constant. Okay. And the assumption is here that assuming a constant breaking extension of 25 percent in both the cases or all the cases initially percent after changing the gauge length after changing the rate. So, every always in every situation the breaking extension remain 25 percent we are not changing it to make it simple and single yarn strain C V remains 10 percent for all the above conditions. There are three conditions. So, this if we change this thing that that also it will be very simple that because we have to get the data here it is 25 percent is giving that means there is no change in the breaking extension. Now, solution is that so we know this uh, this is the formula for actually if this formula will be used when we change the rate of extension. So, rate of extension keeping the breaking extension percent same if we increase the rate of extension that means time to break will be reduced. So, that is how, how we will calculate here. So, as the traverse rate in first condition as the traverse rate in, is increased by 5 times. So, from 100 to 500 we are making the time required to break is reduced by 5 times that is the straightforward situation because our breaking extension is same. So, in that situation it is becoming very simple, but if we know the breaking extension that also we can calculate if we know the with the gauge length we can always calculate, but it is a simple. So, that s by t ratio is 5 okay. s t a s is 5 times of t. Okay. So, s is 5 times of t. So, s by t becomes 5 then the things are simple. So, 0 0.1 log 5 multiplied by 100 that is the percentage increase in strength. Okay. So, if we see again s by t is 5. So, percentage change 
here we can definitely say it is an increase. Okay. So, percentage increase in observed tenacity it is basically a minus f t minus f s by f s multiplied by 100 point 0.1 log s by t. So, point 0.1 log 5 multiplied by 100. So, it becomes 7 percent. So, from 100 millimeter per minute to say 500 millimeter per minute keeping everything constant. So, we will get a result apparent increase in strength of a yarn by 7 percent. So, that we cannot do because we have to follow a standard method, but for research purpose one can one must know and how to calculate this extent that is observed result and how to get the predicted result one has to do this uh, type of numerical. So, one can predict if we increase the rate of extension what will be my increase in strength percentage increase in strength. This is actually important in many technical application where, where suddenly increase in breaking stress rate of stress is rate of extension is very high in that impact say like in impact type of uh, condition. So, we can predict the percentage increase in strength. Okay. Next is that situation 2 that gauge length is increased by 5 times. So, we will use another equation this is the equation here. So, 1 minus S R L by S L equal to 4.2 multiplied by 1 minus r to the power minus 1.5 multiplied by C B percent and by 10 100. Okay. So, here r r means what is the how many times the gauge length has increased the 5 times it has increased it is a 5 okay. and which one is unknown here the v is unknown, but v is given. So, in the numerical the v value is given that is a single yarn strain C B it is a 10, 10 value it is given. So, we will use v as 10 here. So, v is C B percent 10 is given. So, v is 10. So, we will simply use this formula and this is nothing but if you multiply this with 100 it is nothing but percentage change in strength because S S L minus S R L by S L and this 100 will come in the left hand side simply it will go give us the direct value of percentage increase in percentage increase uh, decrease in strength X L is more than S R L definitely. So, in that case we can directly calculate. So, the percentage change here it will be decrease because S R L is less than S L percentage percent decrease in observed tenacity will be S L minus S R L by S R L multiplied by 100 this 100 will come to the left hand side then 4.2 1 minus 5 to the power minus 1 fifth multiplied by 10 this 10 is the C V percentage and if we get this value this is this will come out to be 11.56 percent. That means, if we change the gauge length 5 times our expected decrease in strength will be 11.5 percent that is the basic. Now, whatever problem whatever data are given. So, we should we must be able to calculate the expected change in strength. Okay. And then we will now see we have also seen this uh, pendulum uh, lever principle instrument. Now, we will so we will see one uh, numerical what will be the time to break that we will try to calculate the principle let us just revisit once again this is the pendulum okay. uh, this one is the pendulum with a this is bob with a sudden mass is there and this pendulum principle is it is a it is a ring is there it is a pulley it is a fixed this pendulum is fixed with this pulley it is a single unit this this is the single unit as we can see here. This is the bob of pendulum certain mass 
this is exactly same same single unit ok. It is a rigidly fixed here it is nothing. Now, if we and it is a fulcrum at the center this is the center. Now, if we pull by some rope inextensible rope or st metal strip fixed somewhere here if we will pull and it is the center this will try to rotate. Suppose, this if we try to pull in the downward side this will to rotate anti clockwise. So, this will get deflected this portion will get this will rotate anti clockwise this will get deflected at certain angle this we have already seen in last class. And also we have seen how to calculate all the different uh, parameters like the machine rate of loading and time rate of loading. Okay. Here for extensible material this this is the bottom jaw okay. bottom jaw moves at a constant speed b and top jaw moves, but it is not at constant speed it depends on the extensibility of the material between jaw j 1 and j 2 and the movement of this j 1 movement of j 1 actually gets signal gives signal to the load measuring arrangement. It is basically excites the load measuring arrangement and it deflects and we have seen the calculation. So, there are two types of parameters here one is called machine rate, rate of loading it is denoted by mu that is increase in the load increase in load per unit increase in the displacement of the upper jaw that we must remember. Here what is the load increase here with the increase in load per unit deflection unit movement of the upper jaw that means, d f by r d theta theta is this angle of deflection of this ring of this pulley and that r d theta r is the radius of this uh, pulley. So, d f by r d theta which is nothing but the machine rate of loading and that is proportional to the cos theta. That means, at the starting point it is a it is a maximum and gradually it reduces the machine rate of loading reduces with the deflection. Similarly, that uh, this uh, at the start and at the 45 degree deflection it be, it is the ratio is 1 is to 0 0.707 that is the ratio of cos theta ok. And standard machine rate of loading means this constant part is the standard machine rate of loading and that is denoted by the mu 0 ok. So, standard machine rate of loading the unit will be the it is a say Newton per centimeter ok. This is the uh, force per centimeter. So, Newton per centimeter that is force per any displacement that is the unit of the standard machine rate of loading. So, if one asks the what is the unit of standard machine rate of loading that is the say centi Newton per centimeter any similar unit should be there. Another term is it is called time rate of loading that is the rate at which the load on the specimen increases that we have seen the derivation and it is nothing but the mu multiplied by v. So, if we multiply the machine rate of loading with velocity of the bottom jaw then we will come we will reach the time rate of loading that we have seen. Now, we will see so it is again it is proportional to the cos theta and maximum at 0 and minimum at 90 degree deflection. Now, we will see we will uh, try to solve one numerical here the following are the tensile test data of a 30 Newton 30 any 30 English count single yarn single basically cotton yarn while testing on tensile tester. So, we are uh, this is the uh, single yarn is tested in a pendulum type tensile tester works on a pendulum lever principle with standard machine rate of loading it is given mu 0 it is 440 centi Newton per centimeter. So, that is the standard machine rate of loading which is given here 
and the tenacity breaking tenacity of the yarn tenacity of the yarn is given 11 centinewton per tex and breaking extension is given 7 percent 7 percent breaking extension and gauge length is given. So, gauge length is 20 centimeter that means, uh, the distance between upper jaw and lower jaw and traverse rate is given 57 millimeter per minute calculate the time to break. So, we have to calculate now time to break. Now, so if we see the picture here, so this traverse rate which one will you should we take? Should we take the top jaw or bottom jaw? It is basically bottom jaw, top jaw is the it is although it, it moves, but it, it is not driving driver is the bottom jaw. So, it moves at a constant speed v and breaking extension is give of the yarn is given. So, we can calculate the total total extension because our gauge length is known gauge length is 20 centimeter. So, 7 percent of 20 centimeter is the total extension. So, 1.4 centimeter is the total extension of yarn before it breaks. Okay. From there we can calculate now 30 Newton it is uh, 30 any is given so, are here the tenacity is given in centinewton per tex. So, we must convert this 30 newton any sorry 30 any to tex. So, it, it becomes 19.68. So, 590.5 divided by 30 it comes out to be 19.68 tex and maximum breaking load. What is the maximum breaking load? The 100 is the tenacity if we multiply with the tex then it will we will get 216.5 centinewton this is the breaking load p max and also we know the mu 0 what is mu 0 mu 0 is standard machine rate of loading so that is the constant standard breaking 440 centinewton per centimeter and if we take the reciprocal which is we can denote by m that means 1 by 440 centinewton per centimeter by centinewton. This is the reciprocal of machine standard machine rate of loading. Then we can if we multiply the reciprocal of standard machine rate of loading which is 1 by 440 centimeter per centinewton with the with p max. What does it mean? Here this top jaw means top jaw means it is a it gives the standard machine rate of loading because per unit movement of the top jaw the rate of loading the loading per unit movement. So, per unit movement it is a the m and if we multiply by p max that means it will give us the total movement of the upper jaw. Okay. So, m multiplied by p max it is coming out to be centimeter. So, 216.5 divided by 440 it will become the total movement of the upper jaw and velocity of lower jaw is known it is a 57 millimeter per minute. So, in this way we can calculate. So, total movement of the upper jaw is 216.5 by 440 centimeter this is the total movement of the jaw 1 j 1. Okay and E is the extension of yarn that uh, we know extension of yarn it is a 7 percent of 20 that is 1.5 centimeter. So, this is the total movement of upper jaw and extends during this process extension of material is 1.5 centimeter. Now, what is the total movement of bottom jaw? Then if we add this m p max plus E it gives the total movement of the bottom jaw. So, total movement of the lower jaw J 2 is will be m multiplied by p max this is the movement of upper jaw plus extension of the material that is total movement of the bottom jaw is we can calculate. And then velocity of the lower jaw is known we know the velocity of the lower jaw 5.7 centimeter per minute and then we can calculate everything we can calculate the time to break. So, total time to break is m p max plus e 
bracket whole bracket divided by v. So, you just replace this uh, data to 16.5 divided by 440 that means, m m and uh, then plus e this is the value m p max what is the m p max is the 216.5 by 440 plus e value e is 1.4 and divided by 5.7 centimeter per minute. So, it this will give us the total time to break in minute. So, this time is coming out to be approximately 20 second. So, this if we know if we can uh, if we uh, practice this type of numerical then our total principle of this instrument will be very clear. Okay. So, this is giving us the value 20 second. Okay. So, we will continue with this now we have see we have discussed different test instruments earlier. So, we have discussed the different principles like inclined plane principle or we have discussed the stellometer, we have discussed Presley strain tester and we will now discuss the strain gauge principle. In last class we have started this principle. So, strain gauge principle it uh, gives uh, idea about that the it uh, it is the basically most of the modern instrument it works in this principle. Here the advantage is that this is the instrument where it works in C R E principle okay, constant rate of elongation principle because the deflection of the upper jaw here it is negligible we can neglect as compared to the movement of the lower jaw. Most of the modern tensile testers work on this principle when the beam bends the length of the upper face that is a b get extended c d gets contracted and n l remains unchanged. Okay. So, that, so, in that case that we have uh, discussed that we can actually fix some resistance uh, where here. So, then how to convert this value the change in resistance we have seen that we can two resistance where we can put in the upper surface and two in the bottom surface. So, that upper surface get extended and uh, the bottom surface get contracted. So, accordingly this resistance changed. So, then we we can form a Wheatstone bridge okay. from there. So, two resistance wires are placed on the upper surface and other two are on the lower surface and it forms Wheatstone bridge. Now, in normal case what happened when the things are balanced there is no load with the beam undeflected okay, no voltage across C D. So, there is no voltage across this when a voltage is applied across the A B. So, across A B if we apply input voltage so across output there is no voltage because it is a balanced, but when it is deflected the values of this resistance resistor will get changed. So, the deflection occurs and the value of the resistance changes and the voltage is produced across C D. This voltage output voltage it is actually proportional to the applied load. Okay. That means, the deflection although it is negligible, but due to that deflection the resistance changes the minute change in resistance we can actually record in the form of voltage okay. that electrical signal we can get, but mechanically deflection it is negligible. So, the advantage is that it is a free from inertia that we have seen earlier instruments like say pendulum it is actually it is a problem is the it is inertia problem is there. So, in pendulum if we see suppose this is the material this is jaw 1 and this is jaw 2 once it started. So, that that means, the extension is taking place extension is taking and what this deflection is also taking place here, but due to the initial inertia of this heavy load 
it will not move immediately. That inertia effect gives us wrong result initially okay. and this is actually true for other instruments, but here the inertia effect is not there. So, this is the advantage of this instrument. The deflection of the end of beam is very small. So, that physical deflection is very small mechanically that is why we can assume it is almost 0. So, we can see that we can tell it is the condition it is a it is a CRE principle. This is the one of the rare instrument which works in CRE principle otherwise CRE me mechanism is very difficult because it actually you cannot measure the force we can get the CRE, but we cannot measure the force because force we have to measure from the other side. So, other sides like this is the fixed jaw, this is the movable jaw, movable jaw it moves, we can move it at constant rate. So, okay. But the load has to be measured in other direction. So, in earlier case we have seen in pendulum case here load is we can get load by movement direct movement of this upper jaw. If it does not move then will the load actuating load measurement system will not work. Okay. But here as it is moving the load has to be measured here without any deflection and that is why this strain gauge principle here if we assume that there is a no, diff, no change in movement in upper jaw then only we can, we can get, but the confusion comes here the total actuation total load measurement the it is basically the change in resistance it is basically after deflection if it does not deflect then resistance will not change, but at the same time we are telling that it there is it is a CRE principle because it is a very very deflection is very small ok. That is very important we have to understand this basic concept and versatile uh, instrument we can use for yarn fiber uh, many instruments we can use for different types of wide range of uh, material we can use wide range of load we can so from few milligram to say few tons. So, that range we can have instrument and main disadvantage is that it is a very sophisticated instrument for any repairing we need expert technician and basically chances of drift in the electronic circuit. So, that the Wheatstone bridge after repeated uh, deflection it may the resistance may get dis changed. So, in that case we have to recalibrate once again okay. and high initial cost obviously, it is a cost is very high. Now, we will start another concept which is practical in nature and it is more towards the application. See if we test tensile strength in static condition that may not be actually in applicable in normal application. Okay. In normal running of yarn the breakage occur in dynamic condition. So, static measurement only give us idea about its strength but dynamic measurement will give us the practical applicability of the material like it is the in method is called constant tension winding test. So, it will replicate the winding method okay, and then give us the idea about the tension required for a particular breakage. So, it provides conditions somewhat similar to the actual processing of yarn during winding, warping, sizing. So, knowing the only the yarn strength in static mode it would not help, because that will give us the test value of very specific length. Okay. But yarn which is giving very high strength that may fail because if that yarn uh, 
contains very frequent weak point. And this constant tension winding test gives idea about the number of breakage occurs okay, for a particular at a tension particular tension that idea we will give and this test is closer to actual running condition. Okay. So, this is the this instrument it is basically nothing but a winding machine where this is a feed roller, this is devil take up roller and this roller is just for putting load on the yarn. So, at, at certain load we would like to test okay, at certain tension and what we measure? We measure the number of breakage occur per thousand yard. So, that is the ten that is the tension is the value. So, to say at say T tension number of breakage occurred say say 10 breakage occurred. So, standard is that number of breakage occurred the 20 at, at what that is the tension required to have 20 breaks per 1000 yard that is the tension. If we get if we do not get you if we get less than that then we re increase the tension. So, till we get 20 breaks per 1000 yard. So, that way this is so here we can change the load A B are fixed pulleys and P is movable pulley because of the depending on the extensibility of the material it may change so we, because we are putting load on that. So, under static condition the tension of the loop will be 0.5 L. So, 0.5 L means basically that the loop is there. So, L is the total load. So, that will get distributed. So, that under static condition it will be 0.5 it will equally be distributed, but under dynamic condition it will change. Okay. The tension imposed on the yarn will cause it to stretch. So, stretch there is a tension. So, there will be stretch, stretch is E that E is the stretch of the yarn during tension that means, we have to adjust the speed of V t and V x accordingly. So, V t will be higher than V x that we know if we know the extensibility of the yarn that we can adjust the V t. Okay. So, this is I think it be, uh, this will be it is a reverse. So, V t will be V t equal to V x multiplied by 1 plus e okay. that is the thing. Necessary means are required to adjust the input and output velocity that we have to adjust if we know the extensibility we have if we have some idea about the extensibility then we have to change because the extensibility is mainly due to the, the load okay. that we have to adjust otherwise there the yarn will be slack and the stand as I have mentioned standard breakage rate is 8 breaks per 1000 yard of yard. So, it is not 20 breaks we can also get, but it is a standard as per BS standard it is a 8 breaks per 1000 yard of yard. That means, in this instrument it is expressed in terms of load required for 8 breaks per 1000 yard in the yard. So, we will continue with this topic till then thank you. Thank you.